back. Let's get this show on the road. This is a Pilates routine for people who stand on their feet all day and also have to lean over to see what they're working with. Cooks, chefs, dental assistants. Um, also, it'll be good for computer back, but there'll be some specific things about opening up the hips for people who stand on their feet all day. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing to do is uh, to get you off your feet. So we're going to start with a series of footwork presses and just to open up the arches and take the ache out of the foot, we're going to probably come to somewhere here in your foot where you might get sore, gets tired. You'll feel it once you're on there. So instead of going to the heels or the toes, we're going to do something totally different. Put the middle of the foot down there and a moderate amount of weight. So I've got two blacks on here, which I think is about two balanced body reds but a moderate weight, not a super heavy strength building weight, but enough weight that you're gonna put pressure on the foot and massage it. Make sure you have that slight, um, the headrest is slightly up. Lay down, feel the four points of your spine and your posture. So you'll have whatever is your natural arch here. The two hip bones weighted heavily on the mat. Open the shoulders up and let them relax. Try not to curl in, you've been curled in all day. I would suggest that you open your palms to the ceiling or just turn them up this way. So this external rotation, so the palms face the feeling, ceiling. Just put the stiff part of your foot right on that bar and just massage it out. So you inhale to come in and then exhale, massage it out. Inhale in and then exhale to massage it out. So a good set of these is about 20. I recommend about 20. And I would just call that sort of an arch press and an opening of the shoulders. From there, flow, meaning we've got the body kind of warming up, so we're gonna move right in the flow. Bring the heels on. You're gonna make sure that your kneecaps are lined up with your true hip joint, not your modeling hip joint, which is the outside, but the inside right in the inside of the crease. Pull your toes towards you. And we're now we're really going to start opening up, given we're really stretching out the lumbar with this. So you inhale in and then exhale out, and then inhale in and exhale out. And really think about the lumbar, because this isn't shouldn't be a whole lot on your legs. It should be mostly on your lumbar. It should be also very relaxing. Some people come into the studio and just I could tell their day has been horrible, and we just open up the arches and then they just chill and just press on this thing for a while until you know you get a little bit of that out so i would say about 20 of those are good so that's the the kind of the first sort of uh, athletic move and then the second one is going to come wide external rotation so this would be analogous to a squat so you want to turn your feet out about 15 degrees stabilize through your hips drop down and sink into the mat and pull your toes towards you here as well. And exhale, press it out. Inhale, lower and slow. Exhale, press it out. And inhale, lower and slow. So what we're doing is we're opening up some of the external rotators of the hip joint. So you should have a lot of strength there, but you probably get tight. So inhale and exhale. And I would say about 20 of these. Usually that just kind of finishes out the flow. Then the final piece is gonna be working the, working through uh, the foot joint itself. So you probably stand stable a lot on the feet and uh, probably strong but tired. So we're gonna work on coming into a high heel position. So the way to do this without cramping, people try to force high heel from the top of the foot. That's not where it happens. Relax the top of the foot and just pull your heel towards the back of your back of your uh, leg there. That's it. So you're not pointing through the toe, you're actually just relaxing the top of the foot and pulling your heel towards the back here. Every time I say that, people's cramps go away. So because the arch really isn't doing that much here, it's, this is more about just opening this up. And if you have, if you're tight through here, then the move for that 
is uh, while you're watching television or something, you literally just sit on your feet like this. And it should be relaxing. You don't want to sit too long, you know, because you're, you'll, uh, you are cutting off circulation down there. But this opens up the knee and also opens, the key though is really see how it just, it should feel good just flatten out the top of the foot. <clears throat> but this is going to be important because we want to move through the whole foot. There's a lot of bones, a lot of things that need moving parts into a foot and we want to hit all of them. So we're going to come up into that high heel position, which would also be the top of a sprint if you're running. So athletes love this. So you're going to come right on that, right on the ball of your foot. And you're just relaxing everything else and just feel it letting this front of the foot open. Let this drop in here. That's really the most important thing. Go into all the other cues apply about how you use the mat. Being an intermediate, I'm sure you know how to use this tool. So go ahead and exhale and press it out. And then inhale, coming in. See how I'm letting the knees roll forward and I'm just staying in this high heel position. And we're just, we're just doing a few of these to open up the legs and open up the foot. And you may have to squiggle and kind of readjust your toes on the top. So I'm kind of grabbing onto the top of the bar like a bird with his feet on a perch. And you open it up the whole foot. Then inhale in. So about 10 of these, because you've been on your feet all day. We're just trying to warm them up. So then we're going to go into this next exercise, uh, flow into this next exercise. That's So that last one was a warm up for this. So make sure your feet are feeling okay. You got about 10 of those in you. And we're going to go into a very classical form. So you'll stay in that high heel, press out, drop down under the bar, keep going, keep going, keep going until you get the hugest stretch you can get. And instead of hanging out there, go ahead and roll it all the way back up. You're rolling around it and then you go back into that high heel position and then come in in that high heel position and come out drop under the bar but this time we're going to do two so you're going to go as slow as you can stand it come all the way back up to the high heel go down the second set as slow as you can stand it and then roll it all the way up and then really push through the top of uh, Right underneath the first is the first metatarsal, aka your big toe, right up in there. Just go ahead and make sure you're lining that up with your hip joint. You'll you'll feel good and natural. It may feel like a lot of work on the foot tendons, but that's okay. And then feel this rolling in. And so we work up to six drops under the bar. So for brevity, the last one, you want to go so slow that by this sixth set. You're going slow enough and your feet really should kind of be on fire and that's okay because we're not going to do this all day. If you hear any popping, you know, gently just keep rolling through it, just rolling through it. Feet, feet will tend to pop themselves out, you know, unless you have something that's really stuck. And then you're going to have to get an orthopedic physical therapist. I have an athletic physical therapist and he can pop your feet out from marathons and stuff. So if you really, really, really feel stuck, make sure you go see a PT with an orthopedic certification because they had to study all the bones. So that's our opening set. Okay, so for the continuing on the hips, what we're going to do next is continue opening up the hips. So this could hopefully be a go-to standard workout you can do all the time. So let's hit the hips from all the angles. So I'm going to wrap, uh, this is Mr. Wilson, uh, he's a utility tool, a lot of people don't like him because it makes you hold your form right. So he's been abused and thrown across the room, but I try not to hurt his feelings. I put a smiley face on there and people didn't really think that was too funny, but uh, anyway. I'm going to wrap him up and put him on the headrest because we're going to go to a sideline position and we want to take all stress off the neck, all stress off the neck. So then the next thing is uh, uh, this is the hardest part of teaching really is allowing people just to scooch and find this position and that's the technical word, scooch. Okay, but basically what you're going to do is come onto your side, 
and you're going to stack your shoulders on top of each other. You're going to be really, really, really sideways. This, uh, and then, okay. And now the key is don't sag like you're laying on the couch. What you want to go, maybe sag a little bit, reach around to your rib cage and lift yourself up. The reason is, you know, women, we have curves of this. So we don't want to be sagging. Uh, fellas, of course, will line straight up because their hips are much narrower and in line with the rib cage. So you want to make sure you have that lift. You'll feel the difference because you'll feel uh, the muscles activate. And we're going to work through the bottom leg by just keeping that nice and stable. You, you'll want to have like your, what's called your hip stacked as well. So you're literally perfectly sideways. This is one of the best moves. Everybody gets these. I mean, everybody from athletes to rehab, everybody. All right, so this is uh, the dreaded sideline exercise. We're trying to work the side of the hip. So you'll lining this up. So I'm in a 90 degree, I'm going to a 90 on the leg. Inhaling to come in and exhaling to press out. Inhaling to come in and exhaling to press out. Now, what about the weight? Well, I still have it on a heavy, heavy weight, but since you've been on your feet all day, you might want to lighten it up a little bit because this is really going to facilitate relaxation and a lot of stress. The essential thing is you have that 90 degree angle on your knee and you're going to start feeling like this is your your glute men, your glute meat and parts of your glute max, they grip right onto the bone. You want to feel like there's a red hot poker sticking right in your butt. It's a dynamic stretch. Um, and if not, if that's too much, say you're tired from the day, take a little bit of it weight off, but go in there and make sure you're activating. Those are all the muscles right around the bone. And when you're in them, you'll know um, about 12 to 20 of those. Then that's the first one. So you'll do all of that on the top leg and then uh, change the foot angle on the, on the lunge there. So you're still stacking up sideways, doing all that, blah, blah, blah. Then just turn the foot 15 degrees. This thing is we want to make sure the knee doesn't start wobbling it. Just make sure it goes off to the right side of the big toe. What that means is when it goes off to the right side of the big toe. I should be aiming my kneecap for my first, between my first and second toes, which is a weird thing to see from this angle. You'll feel it because you'll still be in those muscles on the side of your hip. And come down real slow. And on the knee where you had the surgery and where it's got iffy stuff, maybe take the weight down but go nice and slow because it's going to get all these attachments and all of that stuff that you had or take it apart and sew them back together and whatnot and just give them lots of blood flow and you'll get a little bit of VMO right here. You'll feel the VMO which is important for stabilization at the knee. Feel that guy kicking in. And the things probably to avoid would just be any sagging, squiggling, rotating at the hips. You really want to just feel like you're, you're stacked sideways. Okay, so, so we did the, the series on your back and open up everything in the hips. Uh, so hopefully you're starting to, you know, uh, leave the day behind and get into your flow, get into the groove of your workout. So we're going to go ahead and just do a slight postural thing. Now you'll put your springs on, I think it's uh, uh, blue. You just want sort of a moderate light. This is a stock red, uh, but just a medium weight, not a heavy weight like a leg weight. And definitely uh, maybe one red, but probably the blue. And so what we're going to do is press through here, press up through the shoulders, and start just going into real simple lumbar stabilizers. Okay, uh, the reason I wanted to uh, have just arms showing in the camera, so thanks for that bad cut, was it was to point out the following. When you work all day, your back is in extension, but you've got a, the, the weight of the head is 15 pounds, and you've got a lot of rounding going on. So the, if you went and did this exercise in the posture that you might have from leaning over a lot, you would look like this, which as you can see is sort of a stoop, isn't it? 
So what we're going to do before we approach anything else is flow or do a little bit of muscle activation. So we're going to get the stoop out. So drop your hips. See, that's the first thing. We're not going to start sagging in the arms. Push, 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 push. Call a press through the heel of your hand. Press like hell through the heel of your hand. If you're really pressing, you can actually lift your knees up and do it. Shh. It makes it all core. But you go ahead and keep your knees down. The key is just, this is my flat back. It's pretty boring. I don't have a very um, interesting back line. <laughs> so, and you just press a few degrees. And as you come in, you want to start thinking about sending your sternum up the wall. What would be things not sending the sternum? As I come in, I start to collapse. Uh, I'm going to come in and come through my own arms by pressing down hard, hard, hard and staying nice and stable at the lumbar. A lot of Pilates kind of demo just, I think, coming to here or something. Look at the difference. I want to come all the way in. I have to press right here. And again, I'm pressing so hard I could just pop right up if I wanted to. So I'm going to kind of try to approach that bar. And you'll feel it activate in the shoulder girdle and all the way down the back of the tricep when you're getting that little press in there. So about 12 of these. So now we're going to keep going with the flow. So the, what, we, what we've done so far is try to wake up the, from the bottom up, since you've been standing all day, wake up the, get a general warm uh, legs, hips open, feet open, and then the last movement was the lumbar coming up to the shoulder girdle, and now we're going to start to bring it all together for a total body movement. So this is the classic uh, postural stabilizer, and the key is to make it look like you're doing nothing, even though this is a pretty hard move, actually. I like to do it with not to, to not use a grip so that you're pulling from here in the shoulder girdle. Um, then uh, you wrap your toes, you probably won't fall, at a medium weight um, and stay lifted through here, shoulders broad and open, and all the work is coming from under here. So you inhale and then exhale, flow it back. Do these, uh, I would just do these literally until you feel the urge to break form when you pull. That means, you know, to pull like this. This would be basically pulling from my butt. It's not really doing a whole lot of it. I want to pull from here underneath the shoulders. Cha! You know, definitely, nice thing about this one is it'll help you with cut. cut. Uh, so that one. And then we're going to just take a little breather and we're just going to sit for a second. Now that everything is opened up, you just finished maybe probably 12 or 14 of those before you start to fatigue. Now we're going to open up the upper chest. We're going to do what's called a chest expansion. So in the event that you've been leaning over all day, lungs actually kind of can get compressed and cartilage in, the, um, in between the vertebrae can get sort of stuck. And our lungs have components that actually slide and glide against each other. So what we want to do is kind of open all of this up and open up the front of the chest. And we're going to do that by breathing into that part of the chest. And so this is pretty cool. We're going to do the exact same thing. Get your hands set up. Take a big inhale just a couple degrees behind you. And send all your air up into here. And then look right, look left and then release it, and then do it to the opposite side. Inhale, and usually people like to do probably about four of those, like meaning one pull and they look right and left, one pull right and left, yeah, usually about four of those, and then people can feel the release. So I would definitely go with holding your postural form but using your awareness of your um, of your body to see if you if you relax in the upper back. Okay.
Okay, so there's that one here. And I just put a little uh, grippy foot thing uh, for a contact. And then one medium spring. So this is all core exercise. Thank you, Bandit. And it's going to help me demonstrate, right, Bandit? Okay. So first you'll come around. Using the heel of your hand here for safety. Get a good grip. So this is the front shoulder plank. We've all come to serve know and love. It's a beat to death core exercise, but we're gonna make it dynamic. Double and tri triple check your toe grip on your base of support. Start with a little dive of the head. Shift your weight to your forearms and press out. Hold. Exhale, pike up. Inhale, come down. Anywhere from about four or six to those. Uh, that's absolutely a favorite exercise. Um, we're going to take a little breather after you do that. Uh, it should open up your shoulders and your hips and it should be quite challenging. Uh, we'll have one uh, flow movement or uh, uh, an advancement of it that follows directly after this. So for the advanced shoulder plank, set up exactly like you did in the last movement. Bring the heel over your hands. Get a good base of support. Nice uh, balance of the shoulders. Slight tuck of the chin to get started. Shift your weight to your hands. Go ahead and pop up, press out. Now hold the plank. You'll feel a slight tuck of the butt. That's perfect. And then press. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. So you're just working from the shoulders. Just go where you can. People really love this one, maybe six or eight to ten. For as long as you're feeling stable, and remember to save enough to come home with a safe dismount. That one's a little dangerous. So this next move is getting into um, the more advanced, integrated, coordinated, uh, physiological movements that will have the biggest impact. And so what we've done with the preceding exercises is to warm up and also initialize muscles, work the stabilizer muscles, but now we're going to go for what's called thoracic extension. And thoracic extension is just a fancy way of saying extending from the upper part of the spine. So a thoracic vertebrae is a vertebrae that has a rib attached to it. So ribs roll and glide along the spine as we go into extension or lifting up with the back. So um, one of the things that we want to uh, work and keep fluid for anyone that has a standing job where you're facing something in front of you, which is most of us either sitting in a computer facing forward, the thoracic spine hunches over, uh, a chef is a classic example, dental hygienist is a classic example, the dentist, a surgeon, anyone that's working this uh, part of the spine rolls forward. It takes a lot of the rest of the spine with it, takes the ribs with it. So what we're going to do is work in the opposite direction. These are very important postural muscles. So the first exercise just opens up the scapula. So those are the two chicken wings on the back. Make sure that those are warm and moving because if your scapula is stuck, you won't be able to go into extension in your upper back. And then the second thing is we're going to let this tool assist us and push the upper part of the spine. So we're not going to be pushing up through the lumbar at all, just for basically maybe where your brow line would hit up through the upper back and not using the neck. So we're going to take the neck out of it. You've been working that all day as well. So this setup has a medium weight on the spring and the box and you take your little box and put it up here against the shoulder rest so it's the same on all the equipment the thing is you set this down one lower so your head doesn't smack into it when you uh, get on here you want to instead of taking a break feel like you're on a surfboard so that you're very active like you could swim or paddle or if you're on a float, that's gonna keep the, the back of the body from sagging. So you, you put this down because you want your head in line. It's higher, you see it becomes, your, you would chicken neck through this thing. So bring this down. You're gonna press through the 
through this part of the hand, the same part, heel of the hand that we keep pressing on everything, taking the fingers out of it and getting right to the core. Line up your shoulders and you just start this movement with a few presses. And the cue that everybody likes the best is just allow your shoulders to dribble down your back like butter. So you're just feeling your upper back move like butter. And so this is a muscle activation, uh, also a stress reliever. And just to get really fancy, technically if you have a slight, uh, what's called posterior pelvic tilt or butt tuck, a slight tuck of the butt, you really put in the front of the quads in here and you really stay lifted and engaged through your core, this is actually the form for a handstand push-up. So, um, <laughs> you want to brag a bit or stretch it, you can tell people you did a handstand push-up in your workout. All right, so you do a, probably about 10 of those. People tend to just sort of groove until they feel like they're sort of flowing and relaxed. Um, and then we're going to advance it to the next move. So we're going to press out to a stiff arm, pressing through the heel of the hand, no grip, head stays in line, I'm looking at the floor, I'm on my little surfboard, and I'm just going to let this tool push my sternum through and up the wall, and I'm going to keep my bottom ribs smashed into this box. So the only part of me that's going to go up in space is this thing pushing my spine up, assisting my spine in between the two shoulder blades and you see the difference that's the flat and then so I pushed out longer see I got a few degrees I can push with my shoulders so let it go ahead and let the shoulders drop down the back and then I'm kind of pulling down through the heel of my hands kind of pulling down into here so that it pushes me up through and it just that bit of extension so you should see a, a slight arc in my upper back and I'm able to kind of squeeze through the pinky side of my hand, squeeze through my shoulder blades a little bit and roll it down to relax. Um, just I want to contrast that quickly with what I see um, in advertisements where they're trying to look cool and promote a lot of Pilates. Um, they're kind of missing the point. What I would, would say is a rehab and sports trainer and in, in helping people to just live your life better, this is the cool, coolest thing to do for that upper back that's almost impossible to hit with anything else. But what we're not doing is this. We're not bricking up. Because when I bricked up like this, I didn't really move through my upper back at all. I kind of bricked through my upper back, sucked in my abs and kind of pushed up through the mid back as you can almost see kind of a crook in it a little bit there, so I'm almost hyperextending. So to contrast it one more time, this is, this is going to be such a tremendous benefit for people who stand all day. It, it'll release, get into the upper back, will release strain and stress throughout your whole body, I promise. Um, so what we want to do is just keep this steady and let this tool just press that upper back and you're literally like the woman on the bow of a ship. So my gaze is actually about right there. I'm not trying to come up. So if I did it bad, I'll do one bad, real too high. It's kind of arching up. I don't want to do more than that, it hurts, hurts my neck. So just to see, no brick. I'm letting the tool do it. And I'm paying attention to keeping my bottom rib, shooting long out my toes, and feeling like the woman on the bow of a ship. And that's my back angle for a thoracic extension. I have a pretty flat back, so to see it, what you really have to do is see the contrast, which is, there it is, flat, completely flat, because I'm sitting on the box. Uh, so people will probably do about six or eight of these, and I kind of watch their body, they're, like, and they're feeling it, and then they're relaxed, and then we stop this exercise and move on to the next one in the flow. <coughs> So the next exercise in the flow is called swimmers. You may have seen this series before, so I'm going to highlight what have been the most impactful and favorite exercises here. Between that last one with the thoracic extension and this one, which we're getting into, we're going to pull the straps and do swimmers. 
these two really, I think, are uh, some of the most important and impactful exercises for people who stand all day. And they're also uh, big favorites here. So you'll see three variations on pulling straps. Two of them are pretty common. Um, the last one, uh, generally, uh, you really won't see in a lot of places, but I kind of stole it from my mentor, and it's really a money move. Um, the great thing about this is that most people don't enjoy working on pull-ups, but I do treat, I train women here for pull-ups. Um, uh, we have the same physiological muscular structure in our upper body, so even if we're doing assisted pull-ups, you get a lot of benefits in the upper back strength. Uh, but a lot of people don't have the time to commit to it, so this exercise is a great substitution for pull-ups. Um, so without further ado, it's the same cueing in terms of the setup. You just flipped around on the exact same setup that you just had on the last move. You bring the sisters off the box, and you want to make sure that you have a good grip. So I usually put some sticky tape. We're on a medium spring. Uh, I've made an advanced alteration. So on your balanced body, your straps might be here. So you can do everything from there. But uh, I've made a modification that's not standard because people really, really like it. And I mean people from all kinds of fitness levels. By putting your straps way up high, it makes, it really adds a lot to the pull. So you get this great stretch here and this great pull extension. I mean, it's, it's just pretty much like throw your hands in the air kind of thing or like you're swimming. And uh, you should, uh, so you have, but you'll have to pull up. See how I'm having to pull up to get to the straps. But that's just an a, a equipment setup, but I think it's really worth the effort. You have to screw around with these things for a few minutes to get them right. So you can use the foot straps or the handles, it doesn't matter. The same setup but as before, your head is in line with your spine and you're looking down at the bottom of the swimming pool and you're on, your, on the paddle board or on your surfboard. You're going to pull, not with the grip, but across that same part of the hand that you just pressed onto the bar in the last movement. That keeps a stiff arm. The most common mistake I see here are people trying to do this like this. That's trying to, when you do that, the substitution your body is making is trying to use your extremities to do it. And we don't. We're going to target the back and the upper back and the lats. This lat pull is going to feel awesome. So anyway, get in line. A lot of weight through the sides of the pinkies, head in line. And just very simply, extensions. And go ahead and get, get your full range of motion. And each time you pull, really feel like you're straightening out through your feet. You want to inhale here, and then definitely exhale about right there, because you want to get some air out of the upper back lung to really get full extension through the shoulder. So one more time, inhale in here, and then definitely exhale there. Now, the, another uh, common thing that you want to avoid since um, you want to get the most out of each workout is folks will start to kind of get tired and go, oh yeah, I'm going to do 20 of these, and sort of get to 12 and be like, no, you got to keep going. Go ahead and get it all the way up to the side of the body. Get full extension at the shoulder. So even if you can only, say, do, you know, six with that full extension with the medium weight, fine. Drop it down to the light spring and keep going, but get this full extension up the side of the body. So that's the first one. Then the second swimmer, we're going to take that exact same motion and add in the thoracic extension that we just did on the last movement. So setup for that is exactly the same. About six or eight reps, heads in line, and you're lifting. So I'm the woman on the bow of the ship. And the important thing is to not throw your neck into this and not try to use your traps to execute the movement. So for my vision, for my spine, my eye looks at this little knot. It doesn't look up the wall. So a lot of people try to do this and look all the way up here. So it's more like coming up for air when you're swimming. You would come up just enough to get air. So that's something to think about. But just keep your gaze in line with your uh, with, the, with, with the low level of the head. Wherever your, your thoracic spine lifts you up, that's where your eyeballs go. And uh, you can film yourself if you think you're throwing your neck into it. Just check your form. So again, it's just nice and easy up. 
and then you can see the flat as you come down and then up my bottom ribs are on the mat this is hard to hold and I'm pressing like anything through my through my lats through my heel of my hand and then come back down that is a, a money exercise then for the last of the series it's uh reverse angel wings so if you were going to lie in the snow and make angel wings you would make a pattern like this your head would be back in the snow flat in line with the rest of your body and you'd be just coming down like this you come all the way kind of close to the size of your body because you'd want to make the wing you know as big as possible so we're going to make exactly that same motion the palm is going to face the floor the whole time and this may be difficult with that medium weight that you put on. I'll go ahead and demo it with the medium weight. Uh, but you might have to put it to a lower weight. And if you do, the goal is definitely to do it a lot until you can put it back onto the same medium weight. Uh, long story short, it's getting to a bunch of rotator cuff stuff, postural muscles, things that really need to be strong on women even if we don't do pull-ups they still need to be strong because they're an integrated part of us feeling good and being healthy and having energy so i'll demo it for you you get to stay flat on this one but there's not a lot of joy in it because this is a really hard one uh, the key with these is you're going to feel like these things are falling out of your hands and that's really the hardest part of coaching it is it's you can't really grip it you're going to push all through the pinky side of the hand like wonder woman hands <laughs> all through the pinky side of the hand keeping the head down and come all the way out Shh. inhale up Shh. exhale must have been pretty good. Okay, so, so to wrap up this workout, let's finish with an ideal exercise for people who stand all day, which is simply hanging from a bar. Now hanging and hanging movements and pull-up movements and work in the bar, a lot of times the women are like, you must absolutely be crazy. But the reason I want to people to get onto the bar and why people really start to enjoy it and really start working this bar is one exercise called scab shrugs. And it is so important uh, to open up all of the tendons and ligaments and attachments that run from the fingers all the way up and attach in the upper extremities. Um, they get tight and stiff from just being alive and working, but in particular from working with your hands and leaning forwards, you're going to do the opposite, which is open up the back. Hanging itself is very difficult in the beginning. Learning how to grip the bar is probably the most important thing. You're going to want to put some over grip, like your paw, like maybe like your paw, like a little, that cat that hangs. Hard times can't stay here so long. You're trying to actually get your your wrist over the bar. You're not hanging with your fingers and your slide. And you're trying to really use this grip as it gets more directly into the lats and into your core and into your stretching muscles. So we're going to come from a nice broad over grip and, and just start to practice simply hanging. And for about two months, just do it about. I would say every day if you can. Maybe somebody around there has got a bar you can hang on to. And just start hanging with some support from your feet and go maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and finally get to where you can hold yourself up. 
hang there for a few seconds. And by the time you get to where you can hang here, most people are ready to go ahead and start the scap shrugs because hanging is boring. So a scap shrug is just simply pulling from only the upper back from a stiff, stiff arm. And it's, it's a thing that's called scap shrugs. It works all of the muscles that we just worked in all of the upper back exercises. So you'll simply get as much of your paw over as you can. Shift your weight to your arms and pull like you practiced before. And then you just pull, drop, shh. Drop and pull. A lot of pull from the pinky side that connects all the way down and connects it in there. It's basically a lot like that snow angel we just did on the other machine. Um, this should, I think, be a part of a Pilates routine. Um, but for completeness, uh, the reality is uh, most places don't have a bar that you can use. You can hang off of anything that you can find. Um, and if you, if you get a scap shrug, you're not far away from a pull-up, actually, and a lot of the women uh, don't believe me that they can do them, and then we work on it for about a year, and we get to there. But for scap shrugs, you, everybody, all women included, should be able to do around 20, uh, about three or four times a week. It will do wonders for your posture, for uh, undoing all of the work and standing work, and it'll make you stronger across your whole body. Namaste. All these hard times can't stay here so long. Mm -hmm.